can tap now. Okay. Uh, aki rau, aki rahi, tēnā rā koutou katoa. Uh, mau mai tau mai ki a te whakātu ranga a kia. Uh, hei whakawetewete i ngā āhuatanga o tēnei me te kaikiritanga. Uh, te rere i au te mahi whakarite i he mō ngā te kaipata, mō ngā te kahinga nui, Randy Tana ki ngā reopa, ahau e mihi ana. Uh, ki te hehea tūtahi, ki te tūtahi kupu kai kia, kei te pātuna, ki te rere mā te whakarite. Ngari a te mihi nei ki ngā kui a ngā kamata me honga honga. Karakia tātou, uh, uh, manua mai te Mauri Nuku, manua mai te Mauri Rangi, ko te Mauri i a tātou, te Mauri Tupua, ka pakuri mai te pō, ka tau mai te Mauri, tau nui e hui e. Tai ki. Uh, ko he karakia puto nei, he nui te whakaro, te tūnga, te tēnā o tātou, wahiki tō ngā whānau kei te kainga. I can walk him up with Raina, Mira, Tina, and the Tani Kitifinua, Akima Himoki, Tamana Pinone, Tina Rakoto, Tina Tiki Tak. Welcome to our activist and resident theory organized by PIA, the Centre for a Cultural Centered Approach to Research and Evaluation, situated in the School of Communication, Journalism and Marketing over in the Business Commons. First, I'd like to thank the university for the invite. It's always a pleasure to come out and educate and inform the wider communities about some of the things that are going on. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, um, I was uh, played a pivotal role in the lead up to the 250 years of colonisation protest that took place in Tūrangani Ākewa. Um, I'm a descendant of the tūpuna that were involved in the genocide that were actually killed in the arrival of the endeavour um, to Tūranga. And I, I first wanted to just um, mihi out to everybody that supported us during that time and to raise awareness around the actual kaupapa of colonisation. Um, when I received the email about the paper that was going to be written about whiteness and also coming in to present, even myself being an activist and has been involved in these areas for a number of decades, I felt a urge come up my back. It's like, oh, I know we normally address things and we talk about the issues at the forefront on front lines, but I've never been actually in a room where we're actually going to directly discuss this issue of whiteness. 
and also of colonisation. Whiteness for me has been an activist and involved in a lot of these areas, doesn't necessarily mean skin colour. It also means the ideology and the behaviour of what that looks like to other ethnic groups. And I think it's important that I discuss that with, with those that are in attendance today. Um, I've been involved with many, uh, many uh, protests. I've been involved with the likes of um, other activists like Lynette Sykes, with Kune Harawera, with the protest on the Forshawn Seabed when that first started, the TPPA, uh, oil and gas industry practices, with TAG Oil, that looked to seek consent around the East Coast Basin and also onshore, supporting those environmental issues is probably a key factor for us as Māori. Why is it a key factor for us as Māori? Some of you may already know the answer to that. The whakapapa for us is to everything around us. It is a spiritual realm, it is an important realm, and it is pivotal that we maintain and retain that perception or that concept of cultural identity because that is us. I don't want to address some of the things that we hear all the time, because we have experts that are better placed to discuss treaty principles. And it's been in place for a long time for us to seek recognition and acknowledgement of those principles from, in particular, our treaty, or what should have been our treaty partner, the Crown. I've also um, looked at better strategies on how we maintain our activist rights and one of them, in my view, has always been to find different mechanisms on putting forward those passionate rights that are retained and should be retained by Māori, in particular customary rights. Colonialism, as uh, for some of us may know or may not know that are sitting here, is based around the ideology that's been put out there. And I raised that in a discussion I had last night um, with Professor Loha. Where does it start from and how does it filter out? And for many people who aren't aware of that, it starts in a lot of the organisations, the institutions and the system that's currently in place. It is not normally by an individual. It is not normally by one group of people but we find it is in the system that's in place. It's entrenched in legislation, it is taught in our schools, and it is taught not just by, surprisingly, non-Māori. It is also taught by our own. We need to acknowledge that, we need to recognise it for what it is, and we need to address it collectively. If we want to look at a united front and a collaborative approach to make Aotearoa a better place for us to live in. We need to work together with our ethnic groups and the wider communities, but we first must address what are we not doing here in this country when we don't acknowledge the customary rights of mana whenua, tangata whenua in particular, Fano hapu iwi. Because right now what we're hearing out there is about for Māori by Māori. And some people will say, well, you know, that straight away we're placing ourselves into a position where it can be discussed or considered or perceived to be a racist statement in itself. But if we look a bit further than that, We've been in a position where we followed a design and a system that was never designed by mana whenua here. We may have had a few inputs. We may have been asked, what, what is our opinion of that? But has it really genuinely been taken on board? Was it just the perception of what non-Māori think is right for us? Well, those Fano, and I say that, Fano that are sitting here, because effectively, it will impact on all of us. 
If we don't start addressing the elephant in the room, we will continue to have marches like Black Lives Matter come in over the top and be the main focus for something we've actually been living here for 250 years with. Before we start looking outside our circle, let's address what's happening here, happening here in Aotearoa. And let's start doing it now. The relationship of my mokapuna and those of you with children, tamariki, I am hopeful that it is going to grow a lot stronger if we start teaching and we start spouting out there the changes that need to be made. And they don't have to be done violently. They don't require us all to get dragged off as activists and be locked up because you are ineffective if you're in jail. That's the message to activists that I have. You are ineffective to your people if you are in jail. The best thing you can do is educate better strategies for our people to take on board and for those that are activists for different kaupapa to think about. It is our responsibility to make sure that we go out there and we deliver the right information that's going to keep anybody and everybody safe, and it doesn't matter who you are. The persona that's been put out there about activists, in particular Māori activists, needs to be corrected, and it needs to be said that it is mostly driven from a white narrative, a Pākehā narrative, and journalism and propagandas are driven in the best interest of the design of the system, not necessarily Māori. In actual fact, not Māori. Now, one of the things that I thought I would talk about is that um, moving forward and addressing some of these issues requires us to acknowledge and respect who is around us. And being mana whenua, tangata whenua, on the land, we have always done what we've always done, and that was welcome our manuhiri with open arms. In the particular case of the 250, that happened to us 250 years ago. The outcome and the recipients of, recipients of that was the genocide, the rape, the land theft, and the ability to implement a colonialist structure. Should we change who we are as Māori? No. Should we change the ideologies of what people think we are? Yes. But it starts with everybody. It just doesn't start with us. It doesn't start with us on the front line either. It starts with those at home and parents, grandparents, to teach from home because the universities are not the only places they learn it. The universities are not necessarily the only places they learn it. It's important for us to better inform other ethnic groups and our partners about what that looks like for us as Māori. <coughs> so, we looked at, in the 250 colonisation when I was interviewed, um, by Jack Tame about what I thought about Captain Cook. I'll repeat then, and I'm going to do that again now. He has no relevance to me. He is not in my whakapapa. He is not a part of my history other than to have brought back memoirs I'd rather forget. Is he in everyone else's history? He might be in some, but I didn't realise he had any descendants because most of them had died. His descendants had actually passed away in his family whakapapa tree. So it's really about whether that English Papa Papa line wants to keep it. You have every right to do that. They have every right to retain their own genealogy of Papa Papa. What should not be the right of their Papa Papa to do is enforce that memoir of their Papa Papa on an indigenous group and grouping that was 
affected and encroached on and our customary rights removed. Be careful, be cautious, and be respectful of the people and the lands that we live in. Um, the common factor that I want to raise here today is our relationship with other groupings that have been colonised. And it's important that we recognise that. We have a shared commonality. I am not just Māori, and I don't just whakapapa to Māori. I have white, that white whakapapa as well, with the Irish. And I must say I'm quite proud of that. Quite proud of that. I have a shared Irish history. A lot of Māori on the East Coast have the same kind of history. So they would be able to relate to colonisation because of what happened when the English moved into North Ireland. And it's important for me to raise that. We are not the only ones that have been colonised, but that doesn't make it right that a country should be colonised where there are indigenous groups with their own culture, their own heritage, their own language in place. Same when we had the discussion with India and the colonisation of India, the colonisation that happened in China, over in Africa, in Australia, and the list goes on. It is not a race war that we are seeing. It's a divide and conquer war that we are seeing. The only time it becomes a race war is when we are ignorant of who it is we are impacting and affecting at grassroots level. And in this particular case, it is going to be the minority groups, but more so the indigenous groups, and the mana tangata whenua of the land. If we continue not to take that on board. I'm also reaching out to Māori in particular because we are kaitiaki, we are the gatekeepers, we are the, um, the group that was here with open arms to bring in our manuhiri on shores. Let's maintain that, let the propagandas that are going out there not control our thoughts when common sense prevails. And I say that because we have the opportunity to be leaders, all of us, by ensuring that what our children and our mokapuna are hearing is correct. It is up to us what they are fed. We are not, racists are not born racists. We all know that. But we need to be very careful that when we start looking at a person as racist, that we actually know what that means when we're referring to them. Is that a label that we would use? Some have even referred me to that. And that's, a lot of that's got to do with not knowing the person or the people but more so the surrounding information that's fed out into the general public. And those things need to change. Every single person in this room has a responsibility to change that. If you know it's not puno, if you know it's not tika, and you can see you've been in a group of people that have assisted change that is great, change that's benefited the economy, without all the stereotypes, the personas that have gone out there, the perceptions that have gone out there, you will find that's when the country starts to really benefit. Partnerships, I'm not, I'm one of those uh, bano that is of the belief, have we ever had a real treaty partnership? How can we? We're not represented fairly. People say, but Maurice, we are all one. We are all one human race, but I like the fact that we're different colours. I like the fact that we've got different foods. I like the fact that we wear different clothes. I like all of those things. I think it's a great thing to have a diverse area of um, groups with different thoughts, different ideologies, different cultures. But when you're coming to a country where the indigenous people understand their lands better than anybody else. It's probably more suggestible to take that advice. 
and work with it, roll with it, because everybody has something to offer. I'm also a person that supports the rangatahi and the next generation coming forward. Because what we instill in them today, in our homes and in our houses, will be what gets taught in their generation and their era. That's what strengthens the relationships. We are going to be dealing with issues of racism out in the community. That's a given. It's not going to go away anytime soon and overnight. But it depends on whether it's progressed where you have a large number of these things, issues coming up and there seems to be flooded of this happening right now. And we have to look a bit further rather than just the surface and wonder where is it coming from again? Because a lot of it all roads lead back to the system and politics has a large role to play in there. A very large role and we don't address that enough. So I thought well I'm going to just kick off in that persona and then I'm going to open it up for people to ask me questions because really that's what I want them, you all there to do is ask me Maurice, do we have these um, certain things going on, what are my thoughts on them? Because I've been in the public eye enough um, to be found but for Bano, who've only just had the opportunity to meet me, Kano de Kite, and be in the same room as me, this is your time. It's not mine. And I always say, I don't consider myself a leader. I consider my people lead me. And I stand by that. So, kia ora tato, and thank you for coming. So, has anyone got any questions? Kia ora. Kia ora. Um, Yes, I was glad to hear about the Black Lives Matter because when that started here, I was like, wait a minute, that's not here. You know, we've got our own issue. That happened over in America. And it reminds me of... Um, it reminds me of how um, certain groups are coming to New Zealand and are taking, uh, uh, requesting things that we actually should be having as Māori, as tangata whenua, like the resources. For example, I'm getting emails saying that... Um, we have to do more for Pacifica students. And I'm like, what about Māori students? Here at Massey, right? And it's the same with the Black Lives Matter. There's not been one black person killed in Aotearoa by the police, but we've had Māori people killed by police. So it shouldn't have been Black Lives Matter, it should have been Māori Lives Matter. Also, I want to ask you your thoughts on this question about our Māori MPs. Currently, one quarter of all MPs in our government is Māori, 29 out of 120. We have a Deputy Prime Minister who's Māori. Why haven't they had the impact that we thought they should have? <coughs> mm, yeah, all of those MPs. We've got a quarter Māori MPs, right? All of the Māori seats in government are held by a socialist um, political party, Labour Party. They are all saying that this is the best uh, Māori's had in ages in our, our, our pol uh, political spectrum of representation, yet our poverty has gone through the roof, our social housing has gone up, hasn't gone down, so why haven't we seen any uh, impact with all of these Māori and PC? Kia ora. Um, I'll answer the first question is that the concern that you're raised right now is not one that you're raising as an individual. It's something that's come out across the Motu from some of the concerns our people raised. If we take it from this pool, where our people are utilising their resources from, um, and put it in this pool, will that leave less for Māori to access? And I just want to address that one the best way I can, is that don't get caught up in the politics on who's distributing the funding. Because the reality of it is, is that this all starts back up the chain to the design. And we really are in a time where we're caught between a pandemic, we're 
record in large numbers of homelessness. We're dealing with the crimes issue of the Māori incarceration. Um, Māori uh, men and women, the highest negative stats, I'm sure that most people in this room sitting here know, is carried by both Māori and Pacifica. The mistake that sometimes we can get caught in is being caught in the loop and thinking that somebody else is coming and taking what we've got. And you know what? I think I must, might have mentioned this yesterday to somebody. It's our fear because our aroha was opened up and we allowed um, that aroha to think louder than this. Than this. And I say that because of what happened with Captain Cook. I say that because of the colonisers' arrival here. I say that also because it's important for us as Māori to take the lead and lead our manuhiri and embrace the kaupapa, that we're not the only ones going through this. So are our ethnic groups, so are our manuhiri that are coming here, but they're not treaty partners. They don't have a treaty here. They haven't had, not only has the treaty of Waitangi been in place, but the United Nations Declaration of Independence. Then you go even further back than that, then Te Whakaputunga. The question is, what are we doing as Māori to lead from the front? And then from that question there, we go on to Māori MP. We go into Māori politics. What does that look like? How do we make those changes to ensure there's fair representation that's going to benefit all? Because I am a strong believer that what's good for Māori is good for everybody. But we haven't had the chance to implement that because nobody wants to share the power. It's a shared power relationship. We get drafted into the, you're right, the Black Lives Matter uh, all lives matter, Māori lives matter, Mukapuna's lives matter. Everything does matter, but it has a specific placing. It has a specific placing. But here, the most beneficial part of that conversation should be where are Māori lives going to lead the forefront, at the forefront of Aotearoa. What does that look like? What does that look like for our Pākehā whanaungas that are sitting here, whānau that are sitting here? What does it look like for our Pacific whānau that live here, or, or are migrated here? What does it look like for our Indian whānau that have, or manuhiri that have migrated here? I say that because I don't use the term um, just manuhiri because our people are people of aroha. When you're here, you're whānau. But if you're going to speak from a tongue of colonising, I'm not going to call you the Crown subjects or Pākehā. You know, because it's not necessarily for the all lives matter, it's for certain lives matter. Certain lives matter. So your question um, is that let us take the forefront, let us teach, and let us um, afi and support the manuhiri are there because they go through the same thing as our people have. Only we've got a piece of paper and I'm not even quite sure whether that works out the time. Yet we the mana whenua here. And you're asking me, well, over well, there came over here. I can't help with that other than say to our people, Teach our whānau, teach our mokopuna, teach our kids, and teach our friends, our Pākehā friends, our Pākehā relations that are coming in and marrying in, but forgetting their marriage or Māori. That happens a lot. Um, the second part of your question, do we take on that system of putting Māori in politics and parliament? Or do we have an alternative to that? You know, because it doesn't, you're exactly right. We're always going to be strangled by process because it will only take us so far. The question to ask is revolution. Who's ready for a revolution? 
I've asked that in a form that I've created. Are we ready for revolution? But here's the most important thing. What does that look like? Don't think because everyone went to war on a revolution, we have to actually go to war the same way. It's about how we choose to approach it. Dismantling colonisation means sometimes you can't just sit outside and throw stones outside and hope that just like the three pigs is going to blow it all down. It ain't going to happen. It hasn't happened for 250 years. So what you need to do, what we need to do is think about for our people, and I say collectively our people, how do we dismantle colonisation? And Māori politics, decolonise means send them in there to be aware of what that internal mechanics looks like. Take what you need. Don't take everything. Take only what our people need, not everything. And I say that because we make the mistake of thinking, if we go to university, everything we hear there must be gospel, we'll take that back. When we go to um, different religions for different reasons, everything we hear must be gospel, we'll take that back. Well, I was raised by my co-mantua you go there, you take what you need, you bring only what you need back. Leave the rest behind. And that has been the biggest message that has stuck with me through the whole process. Take only what you need. Because amongst the benefits and amongst the kai kapapa that you're being fed, you might come across a can of anacondas and you don't want to take that back because that's the contributor that has gone out in society, not just with Māori, even with Māori Māori, in schools, what are we teaching? Are we only teaching about the colonising and their designs and their system and how things work in England and the Westminster model, but we're forgetting. We don't live there, we live here. And we live with an Indigenous people that are disconnected from the Papa Papa over there. Do we acknowledge that? And how do we acknowledge it? It's not enough to say that we're here. Action you'll speak is important. Say that I have, say that I have a um, particular view because it's justified because I have Māori friends, it's not enough. It'll never be enough unless you action your speak. Walk the talk. Don't think there is only one option for us. Māori have come this far and have vehicles that can be utilised by everybody. There's nothing stopping anybody from bringing your children or your mokopuna and kohanga reo. The only thing that prevents you from putting them in there is yourself. The same can be said for Māori organisations. The wānanga wātero. The only one that prevents you from wanting to learn is yourself. In terms of the politics and the MP Māori MPs, we need to better educate our people on public policy. We need to educate them on the three arms of government. Because if we're saying no and vote, they don't know who they're voting for, they don't know why they're voting for, they just see, Auntie told me I've got to vote. Education is key around those areas in order to see change and numbers grow. But does it just have to be Māori that make those changes? Why are we always the only ones that got to step up front when there's trouble? Why should we be the only ones to step up front when there's trouble? Ethnic groups, our refugee manuhi, they, our Pacific whanau, they all face the same thing as me. So if we all don't want to be throwing the bone in the middle and say, go for it, whoever comes out best, you'll get the biggest number with the benefit. Why would we want to be putting that in that position when we can make change here? Because it's all about funding. It's all about recognition. It's all about acknowledgement. It's all about politics. And it's about a system and a design that was not put in place for us. And when I say us, those that are not at the top of the food chain, and there's a lot of us. So 
What are those MPs doing? <clears throat> Good question. What's this MP doing? How was he going out there and pushing policies that reflect a Indigenous, a Māori, or a collective view? And understanding himself, how well are you familiar with the treaty principles and the partnership that should be in place with the Crown government agents, of which we're now, in this circle here, going to have to vote on. Next question is, what's our alternative? Are we ready to have an alternative? I think we are, but it must be collective. Does it have to be the same design? No, it doesn't have to be the same design. It's just that we keep following and following the same design all the time because we're conditioned, many times institutionalised and not clear because we're disconnected, caught up in all the troubles that are happening and society we forget about where it all comes from. So my advice to you, educate our whanau about what that looks like. Stand our whanau in these positions. Stand definitely. If you've got issues and you want to be heard, you need to go to the top table. You need to go to the top table. You need to put people there that are going to be genuine, honest and upfront. But be aware you're not going to get a perfectionist because they're going into parliament. You know? And all, most things that come out of there are bullshit anyway. <laughs> so be aware you won't get everything. Okay? So, um... I think it's an important topic. It's a passion for me because public policy uh, is an area that I was um, uh, involved in a lot and I also came from out of the um, public service myself. And in order to know how the structure and the mechanics work, you need to know what and how it rolls inside. It's just like a car. If you want to know how your car works, you better know how to turn the key. You need to know what to put in the engine, you need to know what to put in that petrol tank. If you don't know what or how your vehicle's running, it's the blind leading the blind too often. And that can also be seen for activism. It's one thing to take advantage of the front line, but it's, in my view, go the whole way. Don't stop just in front of the cameras. Lobby, petition, but most importantly, the rules are made by MPs. I will be saying to most people on any protest, standing outside the town clock, there is no MP outside the town clock. They're sitting in their offices. There are no forms that are going to move that lobby petition when you're not even signed up to register to vote. Connect the dots. Connect the dots for our people and keep it simple. They're not into technical terms. They just want you to keep it simple. Uncle, if you don't sign up there, no use protesting in front of me. I can't do anything about it by myself. You might want to make a trip down the road and gather the whānau together and start talking about the MP that's not doing anything. We better decide whether he's going to be our MP or not. Same with our people and our Pacifica people, the same with our refugee and migrant people, bring everybody together. Sit down and start having conversations, not just between us and the Crown, but us and the rest of our whānau that are now here. Ko tāhitanga tātou. You can't say ko tāhitanga tātou, and we only say, well, we're over here in this little box here, and I'm not quite sure everyone else is coming over this side. No, Carl. Be clear about what that looks like. So, is there any more other questions? So, I'll do a follow up here if no one's got anything. There's now more Māori on the general role than mm -hmm. there are on the Māori role. Yep. Does that mean their minds are colonised, or does that mean the hoha with the Māori MP, or I don't know, what's your take on that? Um, again, I don't believe it's an issue that is based on whether Māori want to be on the Māori role or not. I think it's more about the process and the electoral will. 
And what needs to change? To see fair representation. Because unless our mukapuna and our tamariki go in at the age of 18 and actually change from the general role and put themselves on the Māori role, it's a transformation process of legislation that needs to occur. It's not our people. Some might say, well, let's strategize. That might be another avenue. Why do we all have to be clustered in the corner on the Māori role? We don't have to be clustered on the corner of the Māori role. What we do need to think about is how are we going to get benefits from whichever area we are going to be looking at, whether we sit on the Māori role or whether we sit on the general role. The question is, if it's that difficult for our people, the process is that difficult for people, our people, we need to make sure that that's a part of the amendments that get made in the next provincial act, and we need to be ready for that. We can't be napping on the fence all the time. You know? And to be quite honest, we're not the only ones in that situation. There are requirements that are made through regulation and often are put in place by bureau bureaucrats that leave universities like this. And I come back to say, what are, what are they being taught? Who's teaching them? What are they teaching them? What does that look like? Is it going to impact long term on just Māori or will it have an impact on everybody? And politics, guess what, at the end of the day it impacts on everybody. Not just Māori, but the effects of those decisions are more likely to impact Māori. And that needs to be thought about. So when when we talk about um, change, change comes here, change comes here, and change comes from out there. It doesn't just happen in individual silos. You're either going to do it all together or you're not going to do it at all. Because the system impacts on all of us. Colonisation impacts on all of us. Just in some instances, it actually has a bigger effect on a Māori that's going to be going down the road being uh, racial profiled by the police and it's going to impact on Māori and Pacifica, sorry, Māori and Pacifica who are actually going to be going into uh, Windsor getting told, well, no, you can't actually apply for a certain benefit because, you know, fit this criteria, this criteria, or that criteria. It is Māori and Pacifica that is going to impact on in terms of high incarceration and poor health. That's a reality. The stats are there for them. The reports have come out, expert opinions have been given, so it's there. And what do we do about that? We encourage change from our peers, our colleagues that sit next to us, that live next to us, that are in our whānau even. And we learn from that, that if we're going to grow a nation in the near future, that that nation better be well talked and better be more informed. And that's how the treaty needs to be exercised. Fair representation on all the boards for Māori as treaty partners, whether it's in universities, whether it's on health boards, whether it's on education boards, straight across the board, a genuine relationship that will help everybody and guess what? It keeps the colonial powers that are in play in check. And you want somebody to keep them in check. You don't want them to keep themselves in check, because that'll never happen. You'll get the same thing all the time. So, um, on that note, um, I hope I've addressed, addressed a lot of your kōrero. And there's, I'm sure, a long way for us to go. Um, but I think the starting point must be with us. Bring the people together. And I'm saying all the people together. Because it's a great melting pot that we can all learn from. So is there any other questions? Any other questions?
My question is so, Mass University is a Tetiriti led university, and we know that for Māori, Tetiriti or Waitangi is very different to the Pākehā idea of the Treaty of Waitangi. So for you as a person outside looking in, what do you think that would look like? What do you think that could look like? In the universities? Yeah. I think that in order to, because there are so many different things happening in the universities, so many different kaupapa, we tend to send, all the children tend to come here when they are looking for bigger, brighter, you know, the apple in the sky kind of carry on that's being driven here, a colonised board here, when no one's at home. The kai. Um, my thoughts along that is that there needs to be consistent representation across the board on the different subjects that are being taught and it needs to be independent, an independent assessment done by outsiders that are involved in grassroots treaty um, discussions and um, that have an experience different in what's inside. Because sometimes the best knowledge comes from the hokainga mm. that aren't, institutional, aren't institutionally being um, conformed in, these, in the organisations of education. Because the education organisation, the curriculums, so the Ministry of Education, it all comes in under legislation, and where do we all fit in there? Then you get to the constitutions, of universities and organisations and there is a specific line that is in place and framework. The question to ask is, even if you have the treaty principles implemented into your constitutions and into, um, into legislation, how is it being exercised? Mm. The key thing is, what does that look like? How does it being exercised? It's not good enough for it just to be on paper and be a tick box exercise to meet the stats. It needs to be exercised. What does that look like here? I mean, you can ask me what I think it should look like, but my question in reverse is, well, what does it look like now? It doesn't look like much to me, being completely honest. Um, but where we work, like I work with a really great manager who is actually committed to the kaupapa of dismantling white supremacy and that's a commitment that we've made as a ropu within the place that we work within. But I can't see it much else, anywhere else, myself. And that's just me personally. Yeah, and, and I'm not just trying to pick on universities in mm. general, but I think it's consistent across the board. And most educational organisations other than kohangareo and kura kaupapa you're not likely to get that same consistency and representation that's independent and they can offer a treaty view if it comes from within. And I say that because you have, just like everything else, you have privileged Māori, you have non-privileged Māori. You have Māori that have been raised in the marae mm. and you have Māori that have been raised in institutions. Still Māori, but a different perspective. Okay. And in terms of the institutions here, the same thing can be said. That if we are sending out reports, making recommendations for framework changes and policy and bureaucracy, bureaucracy is going to implement that in Parliament. The question is, how does my whanaunga know what it's like to be raised at the marae, no shoes, no kai, in the 80s, 70s and with a struggling whānau because the system around us or the environment around us is still implementing that harsh racist view. How is my whanaunga going to know that if they've never been in that situation? If they're going to write a book. I say that not just for Māori. I say that also about, uh, sorry, not just for non-Māori, but I also say our people, you need to take a step back and have a look at yourself. We're not perfectionists, but are we adopting the colonial view more than we should?
and then asking somebody else to come and change it for us. And this, these institutions, um, the recommendation for me would be to make sure that there are independent assessors that are in place across the board that are there to manage, monitor, and support the lectures, the students, and all of those that come here when they don't want to necessarily go through the same chain of command. Disconnect from the controller so that there can be an unbiased view. And that report is fair, it's correct, and it's not tainted by the dollar. That way you may get a better start on what's getting taught in a lot of the subjects. And also, is it right? Is it correct? Is it formal? Who better to talk about your principles and activists, I think, and maintaining and upholding it, even going through the Waitangi to the Treaty of Waitangi, to Treaty of Waitangi. So, ka aroha, these are things that we're still battling with, but their internal activist approach and radical approaches is that's where we've got to start looking at, doing it inside. All right? And um, talking, 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 talking. Change the colour of what it looks like. All right? So, is there any other questions? <laughs> so on that note, um, like I said, thank you, um, Professor Mahan, and to the team. It's been a um, great experience to um, work alongside the academics, because I've never really been one to um, go back into the universities having done public policy and worked with the courts myself. Um, a bit like my tūpuna te koti arikirangi. You start off at a, as a public servant and then you decide that it's not great for my people, I think I'll go back to being the commoner. Um, and having learned all of the things I learned, it starts at home. And it starts with the people around you. Be respectful, acknowledge Māori do for what it is, understand that your best partners and your alliances when you've got a system that contradicts your views is Māori. Kia ora.